what can art do? This is a question I asked myself when I graduated from Stanford a million years ago and moved to Los Angeles and started doing murals. I thought, you know, murals are great because they make art accessible to everyone. That's something really wonderful. But I didn't really find out about what art could do till later when I was hired by former Mayor Wilson Good to run a small art component for the Anti-Graffiti Network, Philadelphia 1984. Philly had a new mayor, our first African-American mayor. There was great excitement about that. And there was a graffiti crisis. And Wilson Good, with a lot of foresight and insight and creativity, put city dollars on the table to fund the anti-graffiti network. He said, you know, cities all over are just painting out graffiti. It's, it goes one day, it's back the next day. And what we're going to do is work with kids who are writing on walls. And I walked in, and when I was hired, my former boss said to me, Jane Golden, if you want this job to run a little art program, the salary is $12,000 a year. You're going to have 1,000 graffiti writers. Here is your box of art supplies. Good luck. <laughs> so I was like, OK, that's great. No roadmap. It's daunting. It's overwhelming. And so I proceeded to meet graffiti writers, right? Baby Rock, Cool Earl, there were graffiti gangs, Alta Bomb, High Class Lunatics. What I found out was the kids had extraordinary talent and energy and potential, and what they did not have were opportunities. So I thought to myself, what's our responsibility to young people of this city? It is to offer them every opportunity and option possible. These young people, they were like me. They did mine heights, they were wall hunters, and what I found out is they truly loved art. So I said, we're going to go 100 miles an hour and offer them programs, and we're going to paint murals. That's what we're going to do in this city. And here we have one of the first murals we did, Dr. J. In 1984, we started to deliver art as a city service in neighborhoods where the only other visible city workers were the police. And when we knocked on doors and asked people what they wanted, they said, we want jobs, we want housing, we are not interested in art. And we said to them, but wait a minute, art can mean something. What do you want? And then people start to talk about their stories, their heroes, their struggles, their triumphs. And suddenly, throughout Philadelphia, murals started to appear on walls. Signs that people cared and that things could change. Art became a lifeline for young people, and it became catalytic and a beacon for communities in neighborhoods of the city that had struggled the most. I think that for murals, what it does is it shows people that their lives count. Look at Dr. J. That wall was riddled with graffiti, trash in front, and this was painted in 1989. Go by there today. This is what it looks like. It withstands the test of time. Fast forward many years. 30,000 kids we work with, summer programs with 3,000 kids painting murals, kids going from being caught in a cycle of crime and violence and drugs and graffiti to finding their own way. And then in 1996, anti-graffiti closes down. I decide I'm going to go to law school. Thankfully, my brother, who is a lawyer, talked me out of it. <laughs> he said, don't go to law school. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm ready. He said, I think you should run an art program for the city. I said, you know what? There is no art program in the city. He said, start one. So I went to go see Ed Rendell. And Ed Rendell said, wait a minute, you're onto something. What I'll do is I'm going to move you over to the Department of Recreation. Come up with a name for yourselves. And we said, the Mural Arts Program. He said, Jane Golden, you're in charge. But you know how when you're in charge, you're, when you're young and you have a spy club, and I'm the president, and some of you are the vice president, treasurer, whatever, we have 10 cents. We had, like, no money. We had $100,000. Mike DiBerardinis was the recreation commissioner, and he gave us autonomy and support and let us raise private money. And suddenly we realized we're a pro-art program. We started hiring emerging artists, established artists, and we opened up our doors to all kids. Every child in the city of Philadelphia deserves access to art, and that is non-negotiable. Our practice started to evolve over the years. I mean that we were doing murals everywhere. We have 4,000 murals in the city of Philadelphia. It is fantastic. <laughs> I know, it's so exciting. But then we said, OK, OK, we can work other ways. So then we started working with Steve Powers, who was a graffiti writer, who became a graffiti artist. And he said, I want to do 50-second story murals all about love that you can see from the L train. And so we started to talk to communities. And people said, what? 
That's not a mural arts mural. That looks like text. And we're like, that's right. And guess what? These words are going to come from you. And this is all about love. And people said, we don't want to talk about love. We're angry. We're angry at the city. We're angry at SEPTA. And we're like, no, <laughs> wait a minute. Don't dismiss us yet. And then people started to become engaged. And after a while, Steve Powers, he tapped into something and people started talking about love. We opened up a sign shop in West Philly. There was a docudrama, a book. It was a cast of thousands. It was written up in the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times. And so we believe deeply, deeply, deeply that art ignites change. And our impact is in people and place and practice. Let's talk about young people in this city who have all the talent in the world. That's what we saw at Anti-Graffiti. And when we worked with young people, it wasn't about a three-week or four-week workshop. If we're talking about serving young people in this city in the best way possible, then we cannot have short programs. We need substantive programs that are sustained over long periods of time. So you can come into our program as a sixth grader. You can leave when you're in 12th grade. This is project-based learning, collaboration, creativity, teamwork, leadership, all the skills you need when you're doing big, massive public art projects. Within the seed of each public art project lies the opportunity for young people in our program to become the thought leaders of tomorrow, to come up with great ideas and to bring those ideas to fruition. And then we started working with people in prison. And then we started a program for people coming out of prison, the guild, where we train people in mural making, in landscaping, in building skills, and we reclaim civic spaces in this city. We have a recidivism rate of 10%. The state average is 65%. It is unbelievable. Why? Because people are creative, and what they want are opportunities, and that's our responsibility. And then we started a porch light program through a grant from Robert Wood Johnson where we use art to overcome the stigma of mental health issues, where we deal with issues around addiction and homelessness and trauma. And it is remarkable. And then we work in South Philadelphia. We have this hub space at Southeast by Southeast where we work with people from Burma, Bhutan, and Nepal. And we work with a community of weavers that is amazing. And then we impact place. We all want beauty in our lives, right? It's why we go to museums and galleries. It's why we hang art on our walls, but we also want meaning. We want to give meaning to our life and to the communities where we live. We want to leave trails. We want to say, we are here. And every project we do is the result of collaborative working between connecting the artist and the community to create beauty. Schools in Philly look like prisons, and we say change it. This project is about global climate change. We wrapped art around the entire building. We looked at this, this whole slate of asphalt, and we built an amphitheater. It is absolutely beautiful. We train kids about environmental learning and taught them that they're going to be the stewards of this planet. Look at this. This is our porch light program. Before and after, 1,200 people in recovery worked on this. When I made site visits there, people would follow me to my car and say, Jane Golden, I no longer feel like an addict. I feel like an artist. And that is the beginning. We took over the basement, which turned into an artist studio, and started offering programs before group therapy. We then were able to win this Robert Wood Johnson Grant created Porchlight, contracted with the Yale School of Medicine, a four-year evaluation, one of those major evaluations that we never can do. It shows that there is impact. Art matters. And who did this? People from our Guild program, people coming out of prison who have talent and ability and can transform our city here, before, after it. 61 buildings in North Philadelphia, wrapped with color. Artist Hazen Han from Amsterdam had been painting favelas in Rio, and they came here and transformed this neighborhood. This is a fantastic neighborhood, but with lots of conflict, lots of problems. And did this solve everything? Of course not. I'm not saying art is a panacea, but I am saying what we do shows us the catalytic role that art can play on the life of a city. The great thing about what we do is it shines a light on our diversity and it lifts up our commonality. And then there's a change in practice. What does that mean? It means we have a responsibility to the field. I think it's fantastic that we are part of this field that includes the Mexican muralists, the WPA, political art in Chicago, in LA, in San Francisco, but now it's Philadelphia is at the center of this. And so we have a responsibility, not just to ourselves, but to the genre. We had a great exhibition in the fall called Open Source, where our methodology was open to fantastic artists from around the world. Here is JR doing a piece in Center City, 27 stories about global immigration. 
And then here, Michelle Ortiz did a series of work about deportation and immigration. And here is a beautiful piece that is, sits in the heart of the city. And then Shepherd Ferry took on criminal justice. It's about people whose lives have changed. Yes, they were incarcerated. And yes, they're doing great things with their lives now. And Shepherd asks all of us, can we forgive? And here we have Swoon, who dealt with issues around trauma and healing and resilience and worked at halfway houses with women. So what can art do? It connects us. It inspires us. It lifts us up. It educates us. And it connects us to all that makes us human. I think when it comes to art, there is something there that is absolutely powerful because it can infiltrate really serious problems. Think about our big, intractable problems that face cities, not just Philadelphia, but cities globally. Ultimately, the role of innovation and creativity is so important because our traditional interventions are going to fail us. According to the World Economic Forum, it said that one of the most important job skills for 2020 is creativity. Creativity. There's a saying that I love, and that saying is, hope is believing in spite of the evidence and watching the evidence change. That is the privilege and power and honor of this job that I do, and that we get to see the profound impact that art has on people and the transformative ability it has to ignite change in Philadelphia and far beyond. Thank you. Thank you.